Washington, thanks for being out here, okay? I know at times you wonder if any of us know, and you get promoted after a while, and you're so remote that uh, you get out of touch with those of you who matter. But believe me, I know you're far from home, every one of you. I know you could all be going to college, you young people, or you could be back on the block. Uh, just uh, grateful. The only way, the only way this great big experiment you call, you and I call America, is going to survive, is if we got uh, tough hombres like you. And uh, you remember, some of you are too young, Corporal Walton, but on 9/11, we racked up against an enemy that thought if he hurt us, he could scare us. But we don't freaking scare. That's the bottom line. And uh, we'll go out here. We'll fight alongside our our friends and allies. Uh, and we're going to keep right on fighting until they're sick of us and leave us alone. And you're buying time. You're a great example for our country right now. It's got some problems. You know it and I know it. It's got problems that we won't, we don't have in the military. And you just you just hold the line, my fine young soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines. Oh, oh, oh. You just hold the line until our country gets back to understanding and respecting each other and showing it being friendly to one another, you know, that Americans owe to one another. We're so doggone lucky to be Americans. And we got two powers, the power of inspiration, and we'll get the power of inspiration back. We got the power of intimidation, and that's you if someone wants to screw with our families and our country or our allies, okay? So thanks so much for being out here. I you completely took me by surprise. I'm off in La La Land yesterday. <laughs> so uh, that's good. Keep the old guys like me guessing. The only reason I came back off, off of, I flunked retirement, okay? <laughs> the only reason I came back is to serve alongside young people like you who are so selfless and, frankly, so rambunctious. Uh, it's, it's a pleasure to be around you all. Japan is an island by the sea filled with volcanoes and it's beautiful. Welcome back. I see you brought friends. Now, I bet a couple of you are thinking, from that last video, that I just must want poor people to die, or to be enslaved. After all, it's the social programs that help the homeless in our country, and the starving poor in other nations. You really don't know me yet, do you? Well, that's my fault. I haven't shown you what is the most important thing to me. And it's probably going to be this guy, who happens to be way more rich and powerful than the others. A lot of people support him, but a lot of people support not supporting him. They have a fight, and he wins, and starts a new government, right here. And he still lets the emperor dress like an emperor, and have very nice things. But don't get confused, this is the new government, and they are very strict. Now that the entire country was not at war with itself, the population increased a lot. Business increased, schools were built, roads were built, everyone learned to read. So take a walk with me for a moment, down one of the five great roads of the Edo period one of the most important to the shogunate, Tokaido. Along this road were 53 shukaba, or post stations, which were created by the shogunate where travelers could rest on their journeys across the nation on foot or by horse. They would provide food, lodging, and stables. But in addition to this, the old road to Kaido held one more significance. It's stunning views of some of the most beautiful parts of Japan. And it was, in 1832, that a man known as Utagawa Hiroshige was captivated by these views, by the comforts provided for him along the route from the shogunate capital in Edo to the imperial capital in Kyoto, and found himself taking sketches of the scenery, of the people working, of the stunning view of the ocean where the road came close to the beach, of the architecture, but most of all, of the people. When he returned home, he was so moved he began producing what would become the first prints of the 53 stations of the Takaido, an effort that would see him become the most prominent and successful ukiyo-e print artist of the entire Tokugawa era. But unlike much of ukiyo-e at the time, it doesn't seem like Hiroshige was interested in capturing the strength of the Tokugawa era, but instead the timeless beauty of a Japan that everyone in the country shared, regardless of station. Almost every one of his pieces captures very real concepts of people, men and women, old and young, crossing bridges, carrying their neatly tied packages and their larger burdens. In sun or in rain, 
sometimes in the most unflattering of light, for the tent shoguns of the local areas. He did not even carve and paint Edo, but rather the bridge out of Edo and those on the diplomatic journey with him for his first piece. But in every piece, he captures the beauty of Japan despite the shogunate's slow decline, and for only 12 to 16 copper pieces per print, made it no more than the price of a pair of sandals to have that beauty within your home, no matter who you were. Over time, the economic and cultural prosperity began to gradually slow down. Knock, knock. It's the United States. People like to think that socialist programs are what make this kind of thing possible. The consolidation of resources and the structuring of the means of production assures that we'll be able to help artists, help the homeless, to provide aid to hurricane-torn areas, right? Well, no. Because the resources don't actually exist. They must be taken from someone else. And the means of production in this situation is love. The love one finds beyond explanation for their countrymen in themselves at times like this. The charity of volunteer workers and those religious few who dedicated themselves to the people and not just the religion or the system. Giving that to the government, socializing care, removes all care from it. You have to look away from the post stations for something beautiful if there's no people around with which to speak on that road to the Haiyan Palace. Because the Shogunate doesn't actually care. They just don't want you raising up your swords and rising against them. Choshu and Satsuma hated this. That sucks, they said. This sucks. And with almost very little outside help, they overthrew the Shogunate and somehow made the Emperor the Emperor again and moved him to Edo, which they renamed Eastern Capital. And that brings me to what I'm trying to say, to what's most important to me. And it's really simple. Love. Not love for everyone, not love for race or any other demographic label which, in the long run, holds no real bearing on who I am, but just that love that we all have within us, whether it's for our closest family or for more than that. But of course, someone else has already said it best. So I think I best leave it to Bunty King. I believe that humans are intrinsically good-natured. It pretty much what drives my platform and the manner in which I talk to you. I don't care what your background is or how much pain you carry. I don't care if you're some kind of ethnic supremacist or some commie. The only thing I care about is if you're willing to have a conversation. Try to see that there is more to the world than you already know. This is why some alt-right folks follow me. This is why cam girls follow me, why feminists follow me. Because I recognize their individuality. We're caught in a world where there's a strong emphasis on groupthink while we're screaming to be heard as individuals. Things like Twitter exist because every one of us feels like they, themselves, are important. I think my ideas are important. Your culture is important. Your ideas are important. Your fears are important. Your hopes are important. Your life is invaluable. I went to a Christian high school. So the life of Christ, whether it's fictional or not, stood out to me. He didn't give a fuck. He made friends with hookers, with murderers, with thieves, with the literal scum at the time, though he didn't validate their lifestyles. Much like I don't validate white supremacy or promiscuity or hurting others, but I'm willing to understand that people are hurting because I hurt every single day. I am in so much pain. I hate waking up, but I do because I believe good shit is around the corner. I enjoy poking fun at people and things, but I want you to know that if you want to talk and show some respect, we'll talk because I care. If you liked this video, please kick that like button in the cunt, and if you'd like to subscribe or support the continued creation of content like this, or to help with my cancer expenses, you can find the links to my website and socials in the description box below. Be wise and be well out there. I'll catch you next time, my lovely.
record that without crying happily just saying it. 